Okay, so we're going to solve this problem where we need to find all the real values of x for which this expression is an integer. And to get started, we'll just think carefully about which values of x are allowed, because we've got lots of different square roots, and we need to make sure that everything inside each of these square roots can't be negative. So let's look at our first square root on the outside. So the outermost one, we need the expression inside this square root to be greater than or equal to zero. So we need all of this to be greater than or equal to zero. And there's actually a nice way of seeing why this is always going to be true, because if we look at this square root here, we've got three minus something. So the worst case scenario where we take away the biggest possible number here, we'd just be taking away three times the square root of three. So here, this expression is at most 3 root 3, so that means that our overall expression inside this outermost square root is going to be greater than or equal to 9 minus 3 root 3. So this is the smallest we can possibly make it, and this is still positive because 9 is bigger than 3 root 3. So this outermost square root doesn't cause us any problems. So let's look at the next one. We need the expression inside here, 3 minus the square root of 9 minus root x, again needs to be greater than or equal to zero. And we can use the same sort of argument to see here, we've got taking away the square root of nine minus something, the worst case scenario, you can take away the square root of nine by it be making x equal to zero. So you can get three minus the square root of nine. So because we're taking away something that's at most three, this overall expression is going to be greater than or equal to 3 minus 3 or 0. So the worst case scenario where we take away the biggest possible value, we still get 0. So actually, this can never be negative, and this doesn't cause us any problems. And then if we look at this next square root term, we've got 9 minus the square root of x needs to be greater than or equal to 0. And here we can just take root x over onto the right hand side and square to see that x has got to be less than or equal to 81. And we also need the square root of x, this is our final square root term, to be well defined. So in order for the square root of x to be well defined, we need x greater than or equal to zero. So it seems our only constraints so far are just that x has got to be between zero and 81. And we can also apply this same sort of process to our original expression here, because we've got the square root of nine minus three times the square root of something, so we know that we're taking away something positive. So actually the biggest that this original expression could actually be would just be the square root of nine. So we know this has to be less than or equal to three, and because it's the square root of something, it has to be at least zero. So the only possibilities then are three, two, one, and zero for our integer values of this square root expression. So let's see if we can solve this then. Let's try setting this equal to three. So we need the square root of nine minus three times the square root of three minus root nine minus root x equal to three. But you can perhaps see here that we need this to be equal to the square root of nine. So we need all of this expression here needs to be equal to zero. And this is going to happen whenever the term inside this square root is equal to zero. So we really need three minus root nine minus root x equal to zero. And then we can rearrange this, we get 3 equals 9 minus root x. And then you can perhaps just see from here that this is going to be satisfied exactly when x is equal to 0, because we need this to be equal to the square root of 9. So we do get a solution when x is 0, then our original square root expression is an integer equal to 3. But can it be equal to 2? Well, this would require it to be the square root of 4, so we'd need to have 9 minus 5 within this square root. So this whole expression here needs to be equal to 5. So we can set this up now as 3 times the square root of 3 minus root 9 minus root x is equal to 5. And then we can divide through by 3 to get this as 5 over 3. And then when we square both sides, we're going to get 3 minus root 9 minus root x is equal to, I'll write this as 25 over 3 squared, because we're going to be doing a lot more squaring to get x on its own. So then we can rearrange here to make the square root the subject on the right hand side, so we've got root 9 minus root x, and then taking away the 25 over 3 squared term, we get 3 minus 25 over 3 squared. 
But even better, we can write these over a common denominator. So we've got three can be written as three cubed over three squared. So then you can see we've got three cubed is 27 minus 25 over three squared. So it's actually just going to be two over three squared. So then when we square both sides, we're going to get on the left hand side four over, it's now three to the power of four is equal to nine minus root x. So then we make root x the subject again, we're going to get root x on the left hand side is equal to nine minus all of this four over three to the power of four. But then let's put these over a common denominator again. So we can write nine as three squared, or even better, we'll write nine as three to the power of six over three to the power of four. And then we just need to take away four here. So then when we square on both sides, we now get x is going to be equal to three to the six minus four all squared divided by three to the four squared gives us three to the power of eight. And as an actual number, if you're interested, this would be 525625 over 6561, which is around 80.1. So this is within our permitted range of values for x here. But you can see we're getting close to our upper bound of 81, which might cause us some problems now if we want to set our original square root expression equal to 1 or 0 now rather than 2. And in order to get 1 or 0, we need to have the square root of 9 minus 8, or the square root of 9 minus 9, respectively. So we need this expression here that we subtract from the 9 needs to be equal to 8 or 9. But unfortunately, this expression, 3 times the square root of 3 minus root 9 minus root x, we're doing 3 take away something. So this term here, the best case scenario to make this whole expression as big as possible would just be to take away zero because this is greater than or equal to zero here. So the biggest possible value we can make here is actually just three root three. And this happens when this is zero or when x is 81. But three root three is only about 5.2. So this is nowhere near big enough to have eight or nine. So unfortunately we can't actually make the original expression equal to one or zero because we can't make this next square root term big enough to make this 9 minus 8 or 9 minus 9. So there are only two possible solutions to this problem then. First of all, our original expression is equal to 3 when x is 0, and we can also make it equal to 2 for this other value of x, just under 81.